their company in Red Wing, and they wanted the the assignment was they wanted this bear that was really mad and the snow kind of glaring off to one side. And again, this is the scratch board with the flap coming down like this. There are several different examples as you walk around, you can see it. And then it was finally, it dawned on me that as I did this scratch board, I really pretended to make it look like a woodcut. And I thought, I wonder if I could paint frisket on a board and every stroke I did with the frisket it feel like I was a woodworker taking out that piece of wood on a woodblock print. I think woodblock prints are so beautiful and it's just that little raised up piece that catches the ink and goes down and so I tried to, with this one was the first one that I did, I painted this frisket down and I left little gaps between the frisket and then I took acrylic paint and painted and then I lifted the frisket and I had this little chiseled woodcut look. And I was so excited because I could finally create this, this scratch board look and put the paint right on it and work on one surface. Because the acrylic stayed down, woodworker popping wood out of a wood block, leaving space between all the frisket strokes. So I essentially frisketed 90% of this and left all these little gaps, painted the whole thing black with acrylic paint took my little square frisket lifter, took all the friskets off, and I essentially had a coloring book. And I took my watercolors and I could paint right over it, and I had my outlines down, and the acrylic didn't move because it was stuck down. And then from there, the sky's the limit. I mean, that birch tree over there is maybe 70% transparent watercolor and 30% acrylic. You can look at it, see where the acrylic is, and you can see where I frisketed. But it's just a whole new style, and it's, it's a real neat look. I drive down the Minnesota side to Wabasha, and that's the next cutover south of Red Wing, and I take the bridge across and come back up. And I'm sure a lot of you have driven down that way, and it's just beautiful countryside. Um, this is a little sketch that I did in the fall. I, you know, it's so funny. I always want to go like this, and then they say, well, we can't see it in the mirror. <laughs> this was a little sketch that I did in the fall, and I think... A lot of people say they don't want to draw, they just want to paint. And then there are some people that says if you, if you become a better drawer, you're going to be a better artist. Well, translating a drawing to a painting is, I think, a little bit, it's a little bit um, difficult because you're taking a pencil and you're drawing with a point. Essentially, you're drawing a bunch of lines. And I don't think people can make the transition from going to a bunch of lines to dealing with shapes. And watercolor is all about shapes and edges. And it, it dawned on me about 10 years ago, I really had a breakthrough. I, I read um, Skip Lawrence's book, Painting Light and Shadow. And he's one of the artists that works with the Cheap Joe. William Lawrence or Skip Lawrence? <coughs> Unprofessional Mike Hopper. But what he said in his book is don't see barns and don't see trees and don't see clouds, see shapes and then vary their edges. And so every shape is made up of a highlight shape and a shadow shape. And in watercolor, all you need to do is find the shadow shape. It sounds so easy, but it's so hard. Find the shadow shape and then just paint the shadow shape. So I started thinking that way, thinking that way, thinking that way. And it's amazing how my, my paintings just started to kind of take on a whole new uh, intensity and level. So. Here's a picture that I drew, a little picture in Frontenac State Park. I'm looking downriver. Here's a little Red Wing shot here that I'm going to kind of, I like the sky in that picture, so I'm going to kind of keep that there. Um, so I drew this picture, sketched this picture out, and what I like to do is just mentally try to break this into about four or five great big shapes. And so I've got a big sky shape. I've got a big shape that's going to be the shadows of the clouds. I've got this big land shape, which is essentially Maiden Rock, looking across the river. And then this whole foreground is one big shape. So what I try to do is I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to just paint a shape, paint a shape, paint a shape, and interlock these pieces to the puzzle. And there are a hundred different ways to paint a watercolor. And I'm just going to show you how I do it. I think that's what's wonderful about the media. You've got people that, that glaze and lay veils of color over and over and over, and they get unbelievable color sensitivity. 
I do just the opposite. I'm kind of a slasher. I want to come in and I want to paint fast and bold and expressive. So I'm willing to lose a little bit on color sensitivity to gain a little bit on expressiveness and directness. I just think it's, you just rarely see a really direct, masculine isn't the word I want to use because, <laughs> because it's, it's not accurate. But I, I like a direct, bold watercolor and I think a lot of times when people glaze and lay layers over layers over layers, they lose a little bit of the brush stroke and the quality of the brush stroke. They finally get to the value and the color they like, but they've lost that freshness. I mean, John Singer Sargent, again, he came in and he did the right color, the right value, the right everything the first time. It, it's hard to tell somebody to just have confidence and just do it right the first time. Well, it doesn't work that way. So that's why you just keep painting over and over and over. So I am going to... Uh, show you how I approach a painting like this. You know, I, it'll be interesting here because I like to wildly pick up boards and move them around. So, <clears throat> I'll see if I, I put a hole, hopefully I won't puncture a hole through the thing. I, I won't get that crazy. Um, I have all these brushes and I use about two of them, but it looks really <laughs> <good. laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's funny, the old expression is it's not the uh, arrow, it's the archer. I just had to have this $100 brush. And, and it's this, you know, it's the classic male Kalinske sable, and, and, you know, I didn't paint any better when I got it. I still like my little synthetics. It's amazing how far they've come with synthetics. So just about all the pictures, the bigger pictures you see around here, I painted them all with this, this one-inch flat. And most people like round brushes and for some reason I picked up this flat brush very early on and I love to just dance this flat, flat brush around. So that's kind of my, um, my thing and I'm like, it, it's funny, we're, we're in the process because that dictates the whole mood of the whole scene. And I've always said I'll paint a sky first and if the sky looks overworked I won't do the rest of the painting. <laughs> Because you can have a good sky and a bad foreground and still have a good painting. But if you have a bad sky and a good foreground, it's just that watercolor. You want to look at a good transparent sky. And if you just muddied it, I, that just bothers me. So I, I, try to, um, I try to do the sky first. The horizon line's just a little south of center. So I've got about 40% foreground and about 60% sky, which is pretty close. I don't like to have it in the middle. And... I, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I bet you're, you you're thinking, when is he going to start painting? But uh, <laughs> this, this uh, picture that I've drawn out, the, the bluffs down there, it's this long static line of bluffs. You look across the lake and you just see this long horizontal line. <laughs> I think, I like action lines. I, I read about it in a book and I can't remember the, the book, but as you look at the landscape, your eye traces over action lines. And in this picture, when I finish, I want you to look at the action line I create with the clouds, and then I want you to look at the action line I create with the, the foreground <laughs> trees. Because the, the bluffs themselves are actually kind of just a boring horizontal line, and I think your eye skates across it. So I'm really going to try to create a, a, nice, uh, a nice sense of um, action line. Now, I'm painting on a 300-pound piece of Arches hot press. And I'm painting on the back side. So Arches, Arches makes the hot press, the cold press, and the rough press. And if you use each side, they actually have six different surfaces. And they just incrementally go from the front side of hot press is the smoothest, and the back's a little rougher, and the front side of cold press is the next one, and the back side's a little rougher. So I really like... So what I'm doing right now is I'm thinking about... I'm going to paint these blue shapes, and it's harder to paint a painting in the wintertime than the summer because the air is drier, and, the, and it's going to want to. Another funny story, um, what's his name, Doug Liu, who paints the beautiful wet on the wet. I read his book, and he says he puts a little bit of glycerin in the water to keep the paper a little bit wetter. Well, I put too much glycerin in it, and I had watercolor paper that took about five days to dry, and it kind of started to mold. <laughs> so. Okay, now I'm going to... 
I try to, I'll mix my color in the palette a little bit, but I'll try to uh, mix a lot of the color on the paper. And I'm going to try to paint this very fast. I'm going to try to see what my water situation is. It's already starting to dry. I might have to get another brush going. Um, these hot lights. Yeah. yeah. But I'll, okay, so I've got my blue area wet, and now this is the key to the whole painting is this action line <laughs> of this cloud. And I gotta, so what I'm mixing right now is I'm mixing a little bit of Windsor and a little bit of Cobalt. And then it looks like I got a little bit of my puppy dog here. And that looks like. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a nice varied edge on the bottom edge of this cloud. That's pretty blue. For me, I'm really busy. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to try to keep this thing moving. And as I move up in my sky, I'd like to try to uh, get these brush strokes out and try to make it look like a kind of a vignetted sky. As, as we go up in the sky, I'm going to kind of add a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of permanent rose. The sky is going to get darker as it goes up. It's hard to cover a lot of ground with a, a little brush. That's why you've got to paint fast. So I'm just trying to I kind of like the shape I've got going. And another thing that's really hard with watercolor is to paint a bold watercolor. You've got to know that the, the paint's going to dry about 20% lighter. So you've got to put it on. You've got to put it on a little bit darker than you think sometimes. Because I really don't want to have to go back on the sky. I've got to do it right, get the value right the first time. When, when I watercolor, I play really fast music, and I always have this sense of impending doom. <laughs> and that, that tells me that I'm, I'm going to do a good one. <laughs> so I've got a purple streak. I want to try to get that out here real quick. And feather that out. I've, I've got a, I'm pretty happy with my, pretty happy with my bottom edge. Kind of, a, kind of a neat thing. Um, okay, let me do that. It's hard for you to see it when I go like this, but I've got to, I've got to kind of have that bleed down and soften, soften a little bit. Now my paper is already starting to dry down here, so it's good to paint on wet paper and it's good to paint on dry paper but when you start painting on damp paper that's when you get into a lot of a trouble so I want to just add just a little bit try to put a couple little dry brush strokes in here okay so that's my first passage that's my first shape Try to do a dry brush stroke, and it just doesn't quite come out the way you want it to. <laughs> okay. And when I get a brush wet, and then some people use sponges, but I use this paper towel here, and then come in with a damp brush, that's a good way to be able to soften edges and manipulate edges without having to send a big balloon in. Okay. So that's my first stab at this blue color shape. I kind of like what's happening here. So as your eye goes across, you've got wet on wet, you find a couple hard edges, you've got a little dry brush edge, it plumes out. It's pretty exciting and very coming through here. Um, a lot of times, like the British watercolor artists, I like to pour raw sienna over the whole painting and 
and get this liquid light is what Trevor Chamberlain calls raw sienna. And it's a nice thing to paint on a piece of uh, almost light yellow paper if you've never done that. So, right, I'm like a hot dog in a hot dog cooker up here, you guys. <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> But a bit like Memer, you know? <laughs> So, okay. I've got, my, I've got my big, bold sky shape here. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's taking shape. You know, there's a couple little things in here, and I think that's kind of the bane of the watercolor artist, is I'm not wild about that little dry brush stroke I made. But it's funny how... If I over obsess on that, it's going to kill the whole painting. If I paint the whole painting, I'll never even notice it. At the end of my wife said that. She's just leave that alone. Just keep going. Fight through the painting if you've got to. And some little stroke or some little tiny thing, you know, in the end, it'll be so insignificant. It was like, well, nobody even sees that anyway. You guys do because I just told you about it. <laughs> but, so I'm pretty excited about that big shape. My whole goal was to do a gradated shape with a real wonderful edge. I wasn't thinking anything about a sky or anything really particularly about the color. I knew I wanted to have the sky kind of go up and get a little bit more darker and a little redder as it came to the top. Okay, I think right now I'm going to let this dry just a little bit. I'm going to shift gears because I'm going I'm to paint the undersides of these clouds and I don't want the shadow to kiss up into my sky. So at the rate these lights are cooking this, this should dry in about, and it's going to be the, um, the shadow side of the clouds, the underside of the clouds. And I'm going to take a little bit of uh, a little bit more ultramarine blue and mix a little bit of um, burnt sienna and maybe some permanent rose. So I'm going to get Take just a little bit of raw sienna.